Hey everyone, we've had hundreds of you ask us to create an updated tutorial on how to make a website with WordPress step by step from start to finish. What you're looking at right here is the finished product. I will show you the exact steps involved on how I went from this drawing and all the different modules on this drawing to creating that into a WordPress website that looks like this. I would love for you also to open up this URL in your mobile phone, nyhealthdemo.com. As you can see, it's 100% mobile friendly, and that is absolutely perfect because people will be able to find you on the go. So it's finally time to make a website that makes money for your business. Before we start, here are some key features. I'll show you how to set up this image slider that you're looking at here. I'll show you how to set up some modules. You can add icons to them and link them to various parts on your website. And you won't be bound by any specific design. I'll show you how you can customize this to make it look any way you want, like you can see here. Plus a call to action, a dynamic Google map so people can find you very, very easily, and a contact form. Plus, I'll show you how to set up a services page. Again, you can set this up and make it look how you want it to look. And check this out, a seamless photo gallery where people can browse through all of your pictures if you have some to display. We will create this entire website in the next couple of hours using WordPress. The reason for choosing WordPress to create our website as opposed to other services such as Wix or Joomla for example is that WordPress is very very easy to use, it's intuitive and it's used by some massive names around the world. You'll recognize some right here for example New York Times, CNN, Reuters, eBay, Jay-Z and many many more. It is a seamless platform and actually powers more than 30% of the world's websites. You can't go wrong and it's perfect for beginners to the advanced level user. Let me first give you a high level agenda of this groundbreaking tutorial. For a detailed agenda just go to the description and you'll see a breakdown and be able to skip to any part in the process. First a preview of the finished website. I've just shown you that and that's exactly what you're going to end up with in a couple of hours. I'll show you how to get online, the essentials that you need, then we're going to install WordPress and then the design itself, and then I'm going to take you through all of the steps to create your homepage, all the various modules and everything else that I showed you in the demonstration. The costs, approximately two hours of your time. The domain and hosting will be about seven to eight dollars a month. This includes your own .com domain name, which is your address on the internet. Keep in mind, without domain and hosting, you do not have a website, nothing will work. A domain is your address on the internet and hosting is where all of your website's files are stored so that people can access your website 24 seven. Without a hosting, a domain simply would load a blank page. These are the two basic essentials. But let's look at the benefits. You're making a website with WordPress that most developers will easily charge more than $3,000 for and I've recently got quotes to prove this. So there we go, I'm going to show you how to build a $3,000 WordPress website for a few dollars a month. As you can see, the first thing we need to do to make our website is to get online. That involves two things, getting your own .com domain name and that is your address on the internet. This com whatever you choose whatever you want it to be for your business will be entirely yours to own and market wherever you want and the second thing you need is hosting hosting is basically a service where all of your website's files are stored and can be accessed by anybody that visits your website without hosting your website simply wouldn't work a dot com domain is just the address but the hosting is what brings it alive Okay, it's really, really easy to get those two things and I'm going to show you how. Beneath this video, you'll see a link to a one-page cheat sheet that I've put up and it will take you to this page. 
It's basically going to be a one page snapshot of everything you need to complete this very tutorial. So everything's in one, one spot and easy to access and reference. I'll put the video up here when it's ready. And what I need you to do to get online is click on the link here, HostGator Hosting. HostGator is actually one of the biggest and well-known web hosts on the internet. You've probably heard the name before. It's very, very popular for a few reasons. They've got 24-7, 365 days a year support. The plans are very affordable, about five to seven dollars a month. And it is it has been running for a number of years and is backed by a much bigger company. Everybody from small business owners to website pros use HostGator. I've used HostGator for more than 12 years myself across all of the many web projects that I have been running in the past for myself and my clients. So what you need to do is click on web hosting or the get started button. Now by using the link that you've um, clicked on here, you may already be entitled to quite a nice discount on your hosting. But anyway, click on the web hosting button. Um, you'll have three options to choose from a hatchling, baby and business plan. It may be good down the track, for now you probably don't need it, which leaves us with the baby and the hatchling. The baby is great if you again want to host a number of domains down the track and a hatchling is perfect if you want to start with a single web domain, which is what we are going to do. I'd recommend the hatchling. You can choose the hatchling and upgrade when you need to if you're going to add on a number of domains down the track for whatever reason. But for now, stick to the simplest option Here you've got two options. You can register a new domain. You can also input a domain here that you've already purchased somewhere else. I've already purchased a domain from HostGator previously so that it made this tutorial easier. So um, I will input my domain into here. My one is nyhealthdemo.com. Now of course most of you are probably registering a new domain so let me take you through that process. All you need to do is think about your business name. For example, jimshealthclub.com. It will do a search to see if that domain is available. And if it is, it will allow you to add that to cart and purchase that at a cost of about a dollar a month, $10 a year. Um, now, if it's not available, it will just come up like this, unavailable, and you'll have to choose a domain that is. Go ahead and select what you want your own web address to be, your address on the internet. I'm going to put my one in for the purposes of this tutorial. And I chose the hatchling plan. You can see the prices here. Um, the longer you subscribe for upfront, ooh, where did it go? The longer you, you subscribe for upfront, the cheaper it is, as with most things that you come across these days. I'm going to, in a second, show you how to get a bigger discount than you can see here. For now, just continue down and go to the coupon code. Delete whatever's in that field and use this coupon instead. B I G promo so big promo and click validate now if you scroll up you'll see that the big promo gives you a much bigger discount of a number of the options available here I generally tend to subscribe for about 12 months at a time or six months at a time because it's not too much of a cost outlay you can also subscribe for one month at a time if you would like to do that and if you want to do that, use this coupon instead. One dirty cent. And click validate. And that coupon will give you the first month for one cent. So it's really up to you. As I said, I tend to subscribe for about six months or a year at a time. Now these are the only costs that you will incur in the making of this $3,000 WordPress website. So after you're happy with that, 
Perfect. Go down, select a username for your account. A security pin. And enter your billing information. It's very important here that you enter your most relevant email address because you will receive your account information in that email address. Okay, now while I fill the rest of this out, I'm going to just blur my screen so I'm obviously not showing you my credit card and address information. Once you've entered all of that in, scroll down to the additional services section. Now these are all optional. I personally do not use any of the optional features that incur an additional cost. So I'm deselecting this one here. Um, you can actually set up your own email uh, through cPanel. You don't need to use this service here. It's very easy to do that without paying extra. So your email can be like um, info at mybusiness.com. This option here I'm going to deselect as well, it's not essential. You can take backups in a different way which I'll take you through later on this tutorial. When you're done, scroll down and just double check you're happy with all of that. Tick this button and click check out now. And just so you know, Hostgator do offer a money back guarantee if you're unhappy within, I believe it's 30 or 45 days. You'll just have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that you'll be happy with what we turn out as a result of this tutorial. So click checkout to complete payment and get online. Perfect. The next thing you'll receive is an email from Hostgator notifying you of your new account, and it will look something like this. It will give you a link and password to your client area it will give you a link to something called your control panel and the username to access that control panel and the password as well as the demo uh, as well as the domain or web address that you've registered i'll show you what you need to do with this now the next step is to log into your cpanel and install wordpress so click on that link you should get to this cPanel login page. What you want to do here is copy and paste your username and password in here to access your cPanel. Just double check there's no blank spaces when you copy your username or password here, otherwise it won't let you log in. and click login. And here is your cPanel. What we need to do next is install WordPress so that we can start building our WordPress website. Okay, so to install WordPress, scroll down in your cPanel and let's look for quick install. Click on that. If you don't see quick install, you can search for WordPress installation in the search area here and you should get to the same area. So let's click on WordPress. Select a domain for installation. When you click this drop down, you should only have one domain because you'll only have one domain associated with your account. But in my case here, I've got a number of domains, so this probably won't apply to you. But just click on the drop down and select the domain that you've just registered. If you're having a problem seeing this, get in touch with Hostgator through the live chat just over here and they'll be able to help you out. So, NY Health Demo, leave the directory field blank. We want to install WordPress on that domain, not a subdirectory, so leave that blank. 
uh, ignore all of these options where it asks if you want someone else to install it for you. No, we don't need to pay this money. I'm going to be showing you how to do it all yourself. So next, give your website a title. Select an admin username. This can be your name, for example. And you can enter your first name and last name. Now this is very important, give it an admin email because you will receive the um, login instructions in your email address. And yes, I want to automatically create a new database for this installation and I agree to the terms. This is all free, nothing from here on in costs you a cent. Click install when you've done that. It may take a few minutes just to uh, create the installation on your server. There we go. WordPress has been installed to this domain. Um, this is our username and this is our password. Now keep these details on you. It's very, very important. I suggest copying that. I suggest copying that and pasting it somewhere that you can uh, easily find it. So I'm just going to put in a notepad here. And that's how you install WordPress. Now we need to log into our WordPress platform so we can start making our website. I would suggest uh, opening this in a new window. So right click on login and depending on what browser you're using, you'll see something like open in a new tab. So let's do that. It will open yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. Now, if you're seeing any type of an error, that means that HostGator has not yet set up your website. Uh, sorry, they have not yet set up your domain and your hosting service. So it may take up to 24 hours, I believe. Uh, mine took about that long the first time. If you have any questions and that's not working for you, it just means it's in the setup mode. And you can just go to HostGator.com, click on the live chat over here, and just ask where it is and when it will be activated. If you have any questions about this step, please do contact me through my Immedia Coach website or contact HostGator as a first resort since they will help you solve that problem. I've simply refreshed my page after contacting HostGator and it looks like my service has been activated. So when I go now to my website, forward slash WP dash admin. I will hit this page here. It's my WordPress login screen. Enter the username and password. So I'll just copy and paste here, making sure there's no spaces after either one. And hit login. Great, so that is how to log in to your WordPress website. This is the dashboard and the engine behind your entire website. And over the next hour, I will be showing you how to use all the various modules that are available here to easily configure and build your website step by step. I highly recommend noting down your login page, which is your website.com forward slash WP dash admin. Anytime you want to log into the engine of your website to make any changes, you'll need to do it through logging in via that domain, which will take you into here. Very, very simple. Even though all we've done here is install WordPress, you can see that if you visit your website domain, that your site is actually live and available to the viewing public. It's a very basic page at the moment, but this is what we're going to start building. We're going to be installing our design and we're going to be configuring all the various bits and pieces and modules to make this an awesome looking website for your business.
the very, very first thing I recommend you do when you log in to your WordPress dashboard is actually changing your password to make it something you can remember. To do that, hover over the Users tab and go to All Users. Click on your username here. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see your uh, account management section which will allow you to generate a new password or actually put in a new password that you want. Now if WordPress determines that your new password is very weak it will just ask you to confirm that you're happy and want to accept that password by clicking this button and click update profile. And that replaces the password that you enter when you go to your wp-admin login page. Next, we just need to do some housekeeping before we start proceeding with creating our website. And to, this is because there is a lot of clutter as you can see here. There's a lot of crap here that WordPress installs automatically when you create your fresh WordPress installation. I'm going to take you through this step by step. The first thing you need to do is go and delete all default plugins that have been installed. So go and hover over plugins and installed plugins. We want to start with a clean slate with absolutely zero clutter. Okay, what is a plugin firstly? It is a piece of functionality that will allow you to do things that a standard WordPress installation won't. So for example, a contact form can be a plugin. A, um, an image gallery can be a plugin. You'll see later we actually use that. We actually use plugins for various bits and pieces when we set up our website. But all the plugins installed by default are not necessary. Some are already activated and you can click on deactivate by clicking the button, uh, by clicking the links you see here, deactivate. So what I want you to do is either go through and click deactivate on all of the all of the plugins or just click this box here bulk actions deactivate apply after everything's deactivated click that box bulk actions delete and apply we want to delete all of the, all of the crap that we don't need absolutely perfect next we want to go to pages and all pages so when WordPress is installed by default there is a hello world demo page that is created by uh, by default so what we need to do is basically select any pages that have been created uh, automatically that's all of them that you'll see at this stage and move them to trash and apply so as you can see, we're going to really be starting with a clean slate and a fresh installation of WordPress. Uh, when you've done that, go to Trash, um, click them again and delete permanently. Perfect, and you'll have to do the same thing within Posts. Let's trash that post. And delete permanently. Good. The next thing we need to do is go into settings and go into permalinks. You'll see that by default there is a custom structure that WordPress assigns for any post that you generate and it's a very disgusting dirty looking URL structure. So if you create a post right now, the URL or web address of that post will be your website forward slash the current year forward slash month, day, and then the name of the post. That's absolutely not ideal for many reasons, including search engine optimization and also your visitor's user experience. So I want you to delete, I want you to firstly click on custom structure, delete everything in that box, and your new custom structure is going to be click on the category and then click on post name. 
So now any new post you create, the URL structure will be your website forward slash the category that post belongs in forward slash the name of the post. It's clean, it's crisp, it's easy to understand and it's great for SEO or search engine optimization. When you've done that, scroll down and save changes. Now go into general. You can update your site title and tagline. Um, I'll leave mine as it is for now. What I like to do here is put a www in front of my URL. Be very careful when you do this because if you mess this up, it will be tough to get back into your WordPress website. So click in between the forward slash and the first letter of your website. Enter www dot double and triple check that you're doing the right thing www dot in that field there as well if you don't do that right it will mess up your website and you might have to reinstall WordPress when you've done that go down and click save changes all that will do is by default puts a www in front of your website URL that's definitely not essential it's just my personal preference and what I choose to do When you do that, WordPress will actually prompt you to log in again. Perfect. Um, next, let's just double check. Okay, go to the reading and actually go to the privacy tab. Okay, no new pages, great. Go to the reading tab. So this field here, discourage search engines from indexing, we need to make sure that that is deselected. We want search engines to come to our website and start indexing it so that people can find it in the search results. So don't check that. Some people have a preference to, to um, check that so search engines don't register the website while they are building it, but after they are done, come back and leave that open for search engines. As far as housekeeping goes, that's really all there is. That wasn't too painful, was it? Next, we're going to start the more exciting part of this Make a Website with WordPress tutorial, and that is installing the design. So now we get into the fun part of this tutorial, and that is creating our website. And that all starts with installing our WordPress website design, otherwise known in WordPress as a theme. To do that, go to the comments or the description, I should say, below this video, and I'll put in there a link to this one-page cheat sheet. I'll have here a website design link. All you need to do is go to this page and click on that link. It will prompt you to download a file. So download that to your computer. Anywhere that you can easily find it, because we're going to be uploading that to our WordPress installation in a second. So let's save that. Now, to install the design, go to Appearance and click on Themes. We want to add a new theme to our website. And upload theme, browse and search for the file that you've just downloaded. It should be called Vantage. Okay. Click on that and click Install Now. The beauty of this is that the theme takes or makes the basis of your website design and all the configuration options. And this is what makes setting up your website so efficient. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Plus, it's so flexible that you can choose any layout that you want. You'll see what I mean and you'll see how powerful this really is. So click install now. And then click the activate button. Perfect. So we've just installed a brand new design to our website. If you go to your website address, you'll see that it now looks slightly different. Um, this is just the default demo template. 
Um, and now I'm going to start showing you how to configure everything so that it looks like what I showed you at the beginning of this video in the demonstration on desktop and mobile. First things first, let's add our logo to the website. To change the logo, hover over Appearance and go to Customize. Then go to Theme Settings and then Logo. Here you'll be able to select a logo image and obviously I'm assuming here that you have a logo you just need to upload that file to your website and it will appear in this location here. However, I understand that most of you won't have a logo ready and so let me give you a big tip. Also on my one page cheat sheet, I will put a link to this website here. Click on that link because it may actually give you a discount. So this website here is a platform where multiple service providers advertise their specialties and one of them is logo design and I mean custom logo design. So they will take your brief information about your business and what you're after and create a custom logo for as little as five to ten dollars. Um, so it's a matter of scrolling through looking at people's portfolios for example like this um, looking at their ratings and their style and selecting and price of course and selecting a provider so check the link in my one page cheat sheet uh, page to Fiverr it may give you a discount I've just given you a massive tip because this is the actual service that I use for a lot of my clients and they pay a lot of money to get all of this handled for them okay so back here you can select your logo image you can select the file from your computer and it will upload the logo to what's known as your WordPress media library. All right, I'm going to go with this logo here for the purposes of this demonstration. You can also select a uh, Retina logo which is a mobile version of your logo and you'll just have to follow the instructions to do that. Similarly, um, actually, if the logo is too big when you upload it, so mine's the right size because I've, I've adjusted the size for this website already, but if it's too big for this area, deselect this option here. And if that doesn't look right, what you'll have to do is go into or, or tell your designer to make the logo height 60 pixels, 60 pixels, the height of the logo, and it will fit nicely into this area here. So when you've done that, click Publish. If you refresh your website, you should see the logo appear. There we go, too easy. Next, I want to show you how you can create new pages for your website and also how to structure those pages. To create new pages, um, what I would first like you to do is just brainstorm a little bit and think about your business. Think about what services you offer. I've done an example over here. So let's say for this demonstration, it's a health, it's a healthcare business. I offer healthcare services. I offer physiotherapy services, which comes under healthcare and also remedial massage um, and perhaps also consultation, whatever it may be. Perhaps my business also offers nutrition, which consists of diet advice and, and, and vegan advice, for lack of a better example, and well-being. So what I want you to do is have a little think about what kind of pages your website will contain when it's finished. Now, this is just a starting point actually, so don't stress too much about when it's finished, I should say. Um, it's just a starting point. So you obviously have a few services as part of, or products as part of your business. Um, you'll also have a contact page. You may even have, for example, a photo gallery showing off your work. 
So now let's take this example and start creating some pages. This is going to be a top level page in this demonstration and these are going to be sub level pages. They are going to be sub items of this top level item. I'll show you how all of that works and how the UR your website URL works when you create this. So to create a new page, hover over pages and click on add new. For now, all we're going to do is create a blank page. We're not going to add any content yet. So what have you got? We've got healthcare. So enter in your page title here and click on the publish button over here. You'll notice that that automatically generates a URL, a very user-friendly URL. Now, click on add new again over here or over here to add our second page. We want to add a page for physiotherapy. Again, click the publish button, but note here that we want physiotherapy to be a sub page for healthcare. In other words, healthcare is a parent page. Over here you'll find um, the attribute parent and because we've already created healthcare and we can now assign healthcare as a parent for physiotherapy. So click update and you'll notice how this URL changes. Absolutely perfect. So now the URL is our website forward slash healthcare forward slash the page name. So now let's add another one and let's call it remedial massage. Once again, this is a sub page of healthcare publish and consultation. Sorry, I have to add new. Perfect, so it's a really good structure here. Then let's create nutrition. Actually, you know what, you get the point, so I'll just create the contact and photo gallery. And photo gallery doesn't have a parent page, obviously, it's its own section. Click publish and the URL here We'll reflect that and the contact page. And publish. So there we go. That is how we create new pages in WordPress. We will fill out the contents of these pages later on, but this is just this just provides a structure for our for making our WordPress website. If you visit your domain, you'll see that it automatically would have added some of the pages in the menu. Now this is not structured in the optimal way that I like it to be structured, but I'll show you next how you can actually customize your menu. Very, very soon I'm going to show you how you can actually transform the way in which this area here looks because it doesn't look too good right now but for now I'm going to show you how to customize your menu over here so your menu is completely customizable in the way that you want on your website so to do that go to appearance and go to menus what you'll need to do is give your menu a name so let's call it for example uh, home page menu click create menu what WordPress does is it automatically creates a menu based on the pages that you've created so if you refresh your page um, if you save and refresh your page you'll notice that your menu is pretty out of whack at the moment the reason that didn't load properly You've got to enable one more setting and that is this thing over here. Display location, primary menu. We want it to be 
connected to our main navigation. So enable that, click save, and when you refresh your site, you'll see your menus um, out of whack. And what's over here is reflective of what's over here in your menu structure. So now, how do we customize our website menu? Firstly, you can rearrange items in any way you want by dragging and dropping like this. Very, very cool. So contact us. We want a, as a last item, for example, um, we want services to be up the top somewhere, but we don't have a services area. So um, we can either, what we can do is actually create a custom link, remove the URL, put a hashtag there and call it services and add to menu. What we can do is drag that up here and what falls under services, for example, um, consultation, physiotherapy, remedial massage, these three items, as we set up our pages, can fall under healthcare. So you'll notice that there is little indentation and, and that indentation means that it's a, it's a sub item of the things above it. So be very careful when you're setting that up. So for example, healthcare, I don't want it as a sub item, I want it as a main item with these things under it. Now you can create any links you want like I've created here, you can actually put any URL and link to any URL you would like and add it as a menu item. Okay, I'm going to remove this for now. So let's say we want home, then we want healthcare, and then a photo gallery, then contact us. Also within sub items, you can rearrange the order by dragging and dropping. It's very, very flexible. So when you've done that, click on Save Menu. And as long as you've got the primary menu checkbox enabled and you refresh your website, you should see that reflected on the front end. So we've got Home, we've got Healthcare, there are our healthcare items, Photo Gallery, and contact us. I can add anything else I want into that menu as I start adding pages to my website. So for example, eventually, I'll be adding nutrition as a parent item and these things under nutrition. When I've done that, I'll actually come back in here. Those pages will actually be available over here. I'll be able to select them just like this and click Add to Menu. They'll get added, then I can rearrange in any way I want it to be appearing on the front end. Very, very flexible. So that's how you customize the menu for your WordPress website. And if you have any questions about that, let me know, but it's pretty straightforward. Now what I want to do is basically revamp this entire header area on the front end, because at the moment it doesn't look too crash hot. And I'm going to show you how to exactly to do that. And you've got basically uh, a number of options at your fingertips to be able to arrange your or, or the look and feel of the header area in the way you want. So back into your WordPress dashboard. Go to Appearance and go to Customize. Go to Theme Settings and then Layout. What we want to do is actually firstly restructure how this is presented. So under layout, you'll see that there's a section called masthead layout. Change that to logo in menu. And you'll be able to see a live preview as you do this. Okay. Um, then click publish. You can also change the uh, layout bound by full width and boxed. Feel free to experiment with that. The boxed design isn't very modern. Um, the modern designs take up the full width of the page, so let's leave it as full width. But feel free to experiment with all of this. And what we want to do now is to change the colors over here. So go to Theme Design and go to Menu. Here you'll actually be able to adjust the menu alignment. I prefer mine to the right. 
um, the background color. Now, this is very interesting. What you should do before or while you're setting up your website is come up with a background color scheme. So for example, mine is a healthcare site. So let's just Google healthcare website color scheme or palette example. Normally you'll see a lot of websites in the health industry colored blue. So what I'm going to do is, um, okay, web, healthcare website color scheme palette example hex code. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, let me just open some of these up. So a hex code is basically a series of numbers and letters. So let me just zoom in here. A series of numbers or letters that make up a particular color. Every single color has a particular hex code assigned to it. So when you're discussing colors, to be exact, you should be discussing them in hex codes when you identify a particular color. So if I Google hex color code picker, um, you should find a number of websites that help you to freely pick any color imaginable, as you can see here. And every single color has a hex code assigned to it. So what I would suggest is Google your industry, health care industry, for example, color palette hex code and see what comes up and try and choose a color palette for your website. Once you've done that, just note the hex code of the color that you select. So I'm going to note mine here with the hashtag in front of it. Now where that will be used, you'll see in a second. So let me close all of this for now. back in here okay so the background for this area back to where we were I want this to be a very close to white background just an off-white so that there is pure white FC 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 is a, a just a touch of gray I like that as a background but now obviously these words camouflage and we can't see them too clearly but that's fine, we'll start adjusting all of that. Text color, that can be dark, so now there's contrast against the white background. Feel free to choose whatever color you want. Um, you can also select the color of your secondary level background. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's try something different. Let's go for the background of my hex color. So I'll just paste it in there. Then the text color, I'll leave as white. Second level color, right now it is that gray. I'm happy for it to be white as, uh, uh, sorry, the blue as well. Perfect. Um, second level text is white or just an off white. And I'll make sure it's consistent by pasting that off white into here. The hover background. Okay, let's take our blue, for example, and paste that in there, but just give it a slightly different shade, like that. So when someone hovers, it just, uh, that's the hover for this area here. So perhaps. Okay, and then hover text. Yep, we still want that white because we want that contrast. Second level hover. Happy to use it the same color as we did as the first level hover. Perfect. Second level hover text. Yep, we want it white, so a contrast. 
icon color, there is an option in this design to have an icon in front of every item over here. Uh, we won't go into that in this tutorial. Page background, page text, icon background. Now all of this stuff is editable. Let me just publish that for now and see what it looks like when I refresh my page. I think that looks pretty cool. A little bit of a darker blue would be a bit nicer, I think. So I might adjust that uh, just outside of this tutorial. But I think you get the point. Um, another thing I suggest, this is very narrow. To increase the height of that area, go to this uh, item here, menu item horizontal, sorry, menu item vertical padding. Let's change that to 30, see what it looks like. Looks all right. This is all personal preference, by the way. Publish. You can also change the font size of your menu. Perfect. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, our menu is starting to look a lot nicer. And obviously everyone will have their own preferences when it comes to color. Um, I've just chosen this blue as an example. It doesn't contrast well with my logo. So that's another problem that I'll deal with later on. There's a search bar that appears here. We can also get rid of that because if you've got a small to medium sized website, there's no reason to have a search in there because it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty easy to find your, your content. Um, to remove that, I just need to find where that setting is. And here it is here. Uh, we want to disable the search in menu. We've also got the option to display uh, a scroll to the top. What that is, is if you scroll down, you'll see this light gray box appear. Someone clicks on that, they go back to the top of your website. I think that's quite nice, so I'll leave that in there. And the other important thing here is a sticky menu. Let me deselect that and show you what that does. Not having a sticky menu means that when you scroll down, your website menu is lost at the top. But enabling a sticky menu is, just as it implies, sticks to the top of the page when you scroll down which is much better user experience. So I recommend keeping a sticky menu. It's now time to set up our homepage and all of the modules and, com and components on the homepage. What you're seeing here is actually a drawing that I've done just to sort of mark out and plan what I'm trying to put on my homepage. And it's, a, it's something I recommend a lot of my students to do as well. Just a simple drawing demonstrating the layout of the home page. And this is what we're going to be building today in this tutorial. So we've already done the header area with the logo and the menu items. We'll be doing an image slider here uh, that slides and transitions between images. Then we'll add some text and some icons and links in a module that looks something like this. Then we'll add a call to action, which is some words and a link, a button perhaps, to make or encourage your users to take action, whether it's contacting you or filling in a form or making an appointment. And then I'll also demonstrate how to set up a form on your, on your homepage, as well as adding your location, as well as a dynamic Google map. And all of this in the next 15 to 20 minutes. So your you're going to be making a really, really cool website with this type of a homepage. And of course, this is absolutely flexible. This is just an example of what I planned. You can obviously plan anything you want. And it just comes down to this design being so flexible. You can actually build any type of layout that you really want for your website. This next 15 to 20 minutes will show you exactly how to achieve that. To begin setting up your home page, you first need to go to Appearance and click on Home Page. Install the Page Builder plugin. Click on that link. There are a few plugins that you need to install to have 
uh, the functionality needed to set up a home page. And a plugin, if you remember, is something that you install to WordPress to allow extended functionality or additional features. So let's click on that. Before you do that, actually, just make sure that this switch is turned on. So this is the one page builder by Site Origin. Click on the Install Now button. That's actually not working for me for some odd reason. So it may be the same for you. Let me just open up the plugins and add a new plugin in a new window. So the one we want to install is the Page Builder plugin. And what this plugin will allow us to do is customize and manipulate the website in any way we want and we can choose any layout that we want as I mentioned earlier. So let's install that one here, Page Builder by Site Origin and activate. Perfect. There are a couple of other plugins that we need to install before we can get started with our homepage. And that is Site Origin CSS and Site Origin Widgets Bundle. So let me add a new plugin. So click on the Add New button. Let's search for Site Origin CSS. That's the one. Install now and activate. And then last but not least, Site Origin Widgets Bundle. Oh, you've got to click Add New first. That's the one there. Install and of course activate as you normally would do. There we go. Now if we just refresh this page here, so I'll just go back to Appearance and Home Page. Click on that again. There we go. Everything's been installed and now we're looking at this page here, which is our Home Page uh, Setup module. And we can actually add rows, we can add modules, and this entire builder that you're looking at here will allow us to build our entire home page and any other page layout that we need now and down the track. So it's extremely powerful and I'm going to show you how to use this. First things first, click on custom home page on. Very important. And then save home page. Now if you refresh your website, you'll notice that this is the form that it takes. These modules that you're looking at over here basically reflect these in the setup page over here. So you've got circle icons, three circle icons, a headline widget and some other stuff here. Now this is just set up by default. The first thing I need you to do is get rid of all of this. So I want you to start with a clean slate. So if you hover over the spanner and then click on delete row and are you sure? Yes, click on it again. That'll get rid of that entire row. You can also get rid of individual modules if you hover over the module and click delete like that. But like I said, let's get rid of everything and start with a clean slate. When you've done that, click on save home page. And then when you refresh your website, it should be blank. Perfect. And that is where we will start. Let's start with creating an image slider. Before I get into showing you how to build that slider, I'm going to show you where I get some images from, a couple of resources that I use, and also how to resize images so that it fits nicely. If you've already got your images, what I recommend is just go down to the uh, description of this video, look at the agenda, and just progress to the next item after this, which is setting up or adding images to your slider. So where do I get my images from? There is one site in particular that I really like, and it's unsplash.com.
Unsplash is a big bank of free royalty, uh, and royalty-free photos, I should say. Um, they're very high quality. You can basically search for any type of topic that you want and you'll get some images that are relevant. So what you can do is search through the uh, big bank of images here, click on images you like and download them onto your computer. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I'll just find it here so I can progress while I'm on this video. Here we go. Here are some images that I've found. So I've simply just gone and searched and downloaded them to my computer. When you've done that, you need to resize your images. So what I recommend doing, and you can do this in a number of ways, you can use Photoshop, you can use your own photo editing software. I am pretty basic when it comes to this, and I use Microsoft Paint. So I open each image in Paint. Firstly, it's a massive file, 4.2 megabytes. And the first thing I generally do is resize this um, into a horizontal width of 1200 pixels. Now if you save that, you'll see the file size has dropped by about 10%, which is amazing. Then I want to make the height about 500 pixels so that it fits nicely into an image slider that is about 1200 pixels wide and approximately 500 pixels tall, which is all up to your personal preference. So what I try to do is try and manipulate this so that the number down the bottom when I adjust the image is about 500 pixels. Now some images will work great, some won't. I'm obviously doing this as a demonstration. Okay, so I've got that 1200 by 500. I'll click Save and then I'll go to the next image and I'll resize all of them so then they're ready to use and upload in our image slider. So 1200 wide. Let me just adjust some of that. and save. I obviously will cut this video and restart it when I've adjusted the remaining so I don't waste your time. Now that images have been prepared, it's now time to create and configure this image slider over here. To do that we need to install a plugin so go to Plugins and click on Add New. You'll remember that a plugin is something that you use in WordPress that adds extended functionality. So what we need to do now is install a plugin that actually allows us to have an image slider on our website. And the name of this plugin is called Smart Slider 3. So go to the search box and search for Smart Slider 3. This is the one here. Click on the Install Now button. And then when that's installed, just click on Activate, and that will activate that plugin and make it ready for use and configuration. Once you've done that, you should see a tab called Smart Slider here. If you don't, just refresh your dashboard. So go to Dashboard Home, and you should see a, a, a Smart Slider tab that you can click on. Okay, so what we need to do next is go down and create a new slider. I recommend using a full width slider so that it takes up the entire width of your website. It looks much nicer. And then, okay, give your slider a name. New homepage slider. Uh, width 1200, great. Height uh, 500. I tend to stick to somewhere between 500, uh, 400 and 500. So let's try 450 for now. And this is all configurable later on, so don't worry too much. Click create when you're ready.
Perfect. So the slide has been created. Now what we need to do is add the slides. So click on add slide and click on image. What this will do is prompt the media library to open. And um, what you need to do here is go and select files from your computer that you want to upload into the slider. So you've got to go and select the images. Alternatively, if you've already got them in your media library for whatever reason, you can go to media library and just select them from there. But in this case, we need to upload some new images. Select files. I'm selecting them from my computer. And these are the ones that I've already gotten ready. I've resized them 1200 by 500 and they're ready. So what I'm going to do is hold down control and select all of them. Or you can just do that and click open. And what that will do is start uploading them into your media library ready for use. Perfect. Once they've been uploaded, click select. And what that's done is uploaded these images into our slider. So if I click save, actually uh, what we need to do is put this on our website first. So, so let me just show you how to configure this first before I show it to you on the front end. So you can actually rearrange the order in which you want the slides to appear simply by dragging and dropping like I'm doing here. Perfect. Now, a couple of options that are very important for you to know. If you scroll down and go to the general section, you can obviously change the name of your new slider. You can select if you want it to fit your whole screen, which I do. You can select how you want it to animate when it slides from picture to picture. The You can select how you want the arrows to appear when it scrolls left and right. So let's say we want this for example. Okay, there are a number of options here and you can actually have a look at this in your own time and play around with those settings. The thing that I really want to emphasize or highlight here are two things. One is the size of the image slider. You'll see when it comes up in a, in a few minutes, you can either increase or decrease the height of the slider depending on if it's taking up too much of the screen or not. Um, and this is an important one here, autoplay. I like it when my homepage slides play automatically without me doing anything. So every few seconds it will transition onto the next slide. The way you enable that is go to autoplay and click on this to enable. Now this interval here, 8,000 milliseconds is 8 seconds. It will transition to the next slide every 8 seconds. I like to have it at about 4 or 5 seconds. So if you change that to 5,000, that means five every 5 seconds it will change and transition. Stop autoplay on click. No, I want it to keep autoplaying. Doesn't matter if someone clicks on the slide. Um, mouse off. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to save that now. Next, we need to put the slider on our homepage. Right now, we've set up a slider, but if you visit our website, there's nothing there. So how do we do this? Back into your WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance and Customize. I think it's under Theme Settings. So let's just have a look. Uh, home, and yep, there it is. So under Theme Settings and Home, you'll see an area to select your homepage slider. We've just created this one here, so we've called it the new homepage slider. Yours should appear in this drop-down list. So all you need to do is select your new slider that you've set up and hit the publish button. Now let's go and refresh the site. There we go. We've refreshed the homepage and we can see our slider taking effect there. I can actually move it with the mouse. And if you wait five seconds, it will automatically transition onto the next one. Now, if in your opinion, this is taking up too much space, 
and you might not be able to see stuff under the slider, you can simply go back into your slider setup area. So all you need to go back in to is smart slider. Um, go to the size tab and you can reduce the size if you wish. So let's say 400 pixels for example and click save. If you refresh your site, all of that will take effect. There we go. So it's all a matter of personal preference and what you think fits best for the look and feel of your WordPress website. So I hope that was pretty clear on how you make a slider. Now that we've added slides to our homepage, let me now show you how to add a layer of text and perhaps a button on each slide so it can be a call to action for example one of the slides can have something about making an appointment and a button that links to your appointment page and another slide for example can have something about um, your services and links to your services page so let's now go through how to add these layers back into your smart slider if you scroll down go to your home page slider Hover over an image that you want to add an overlay to. You'll see an edit button, so click on that. Now over here on the left hand side, click on, clicking on this will give you options to add various types of layers. For example, a heading, paragraph of text, a button, or you can actually use these elements here. What I'm going to do perhaps for this demonstration is add a heading, a line of text and a button with a link to one of the one of the pages on our website. So let me demonstrate that. Let's add a heading first. Drag that onto the page or onto the image like this. You've got the option of adjusting the layout to the left, center or right. You've also got the option of changing the color of this header using this color picker. Now obviously the key here is having an image that allows you to contrast the text on top of it. So a, a darker image with light text or a lighter image with dark text. You can obviously change what you want that heading to be. Okay, that's good for now. Now let's go and add a line of text. So drag that where you want that to appear. I want it below the header. Let's add some text. So for this one here we'll need to adjust the alignment. Let's put it in the middle and let's make it a light color. Perfect. You can also change the size of the actual text and the padding. Actually, the padding is over here, the margin. So that is simply how much space you want in between that element and the ones around it, as an example. Okay, and thirdly, let's go in and add a button. Drag that on. Let's give it a title. Um, let's say we want that button to link to a particular page on our website. So just predicting the future here, I think I might have a page called services that has this particular URL. Obviously when you set up your website, you can come back and change these links to your exact page URLs. Let's just use this as an example for now. You can also choose whether to open this link in its own window or a new window. If a user is staying on your page or on your website, leave it as self to open in the same window. Um, you can change the size of the button text if you'd like to do that. And you can also change the color of the button. So this here is the color of the text, but this here is the color of the button. You may remember that I actually selected a color scheme when I was setting up the menu for our website. And that's this color here with this hex code. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm simply going to paste it into the background color. 
and that should give it that blue. Perfect. Um, this button is sitting a bit too close to the text, so what I can actually do is adjust the margin here so that it looks a little bit nicer and more spaced out. I think that's absolutely perfect. Okay. When you've done that and you're happy with the way it's laid out, just click on the Save button just up here. And then let's go and refresh our website to see what that looks like. Absolutely perfect. So now if someone clicks on this button, they'll get redirected to that URL, which at the moment is not a real page, so it will just come up with the error. But I hope that was able to demonstrate to you how you can actually add a layer of text and button on top of your slider so that people can access various parts of your website much more easily. If you have any questions about that, let me know and I'll try and help you out uh, in the comments of this video below. The next thing I would like to show you in making your WordPress website step by step is this section over here. So let's put in a title as well as some image icons and links to various bits and pieces of your website. For example, some people like to list their main services on the home page in this section. Some people like to have links to services, contact us or book an appointment, just an example. But let's now build out this section here. So back into your home page or your WordPress dashboard, I should say, go back into appearance and home page. Now you will remember that we started with a blank slate over here. All we've got is a slider and we've got nothing else on our home page. If you haven't got that, delete everything you see on this page, delete all the modules and start with a blank slate. Now this is the layout builder. It's very intuitive. We can add a new row. So click on add row. Say here in this example, we want one row with a title and a bit of text. Then we want another row below that that's divided in three for three modules like you're looking at over here. So we want to add a new row. Let's have the first row set as one. Now if you've got multiple rows, this thing is very, very intuitive. You can actually split the widths of each row in any way you want, like that or even manually like this. And then you can add modules onto each one of the rows and you'll see that in a second. But this one we want just one row. You can also manage how you want the background color and the uh, layout margins to be for each one. But let's keep it simple for now. Click on insert. Once you've added the row, we want to add a widget. For this particular one, we want to add a title and some text. So what I recommend is if you scroll down, let's look for the Vantage headline. Click on that and then click on the edit button. Let's give it a title, a subtitle as well if you would like to. and click on done. Let's save that and refresh the site to see what that looks like. There we go. Now let's build three more modules with icons. So again, add a new row. This one I want a um, three column row and I want them all evenly distributed, so that's perfect. Click on Insert. Add a widget, and I want you to add a widget called the circle icon. So click on that. If it doesn't appear in this column here and appears somewhere else, all you need to do is drag and drop. 
So click edit. Now let's give this one a title. You can change the color. I'm going to leave it as default. Uh, text. That's the text that comes under the title. An icon. This is the interesting part. There are a number of icons to choose from and it's really hard to see in a drop down list like this. But where these icons come from is a service called Font Awesome. So if you just Google Font Awesome version 4, I want you to go to this link here. This is the URL. And then go to icons. Perfect. All of these little icons, um, actually not all of them, a lot of them have been added to this bank of icons over here. So if you, for example, want an icon with a Thunderbolt, go and see if Bolt is available. And it is. So let's select that there for the purposes of this demo. Um, icon position top, bottom, or the left or right side of the um, title. I like to have it at the top and a large icon. The more text is the call to action. So the text and link that sits under the title and paragraph. So let's just say read more, or let's just say how services, and we can put a URL in there. Obviously when your site is built out a bit more, you will have a URL to put in there. Okay, let's click done and save and see what that looks like. Very nice. Now we can obviously go back in and add two more columns or sections. For example, um, contact us or, or, or you can even divide it up into one of your other services. Now what I'm going to show you is a very efficient way to set these up. When you've set up one, that you're happy with, just click on the duplicate button and you can then drag and drop them into the various other columns. There we go. And now all we really need to do is go back into edit mode and change the title for each one so there's a little bit less work to do. And obviously change the title, the text, um, and the icon that you want to use. So let's search for something location related. Okay. And the third one, I'll just edit. Let me just go and see if they have something related to photos that doesn't look too good or perhaps cameras. Oh yeah, that looks very nice. Video camera, I'll use that icon there if it's available. Video camera, perfect. Let's see what that looks like. Obviously I would normally go in and change all of this stuff as well. This will become live later on in the tutorial, you'll see that. Okay, let me just save and show you what that looks like now. Very cool. This style with a um, colored background on the logos is not a very modern style. You can also change the background color of that. I'll show you how to do that. And you can make it a more modern styling, which is what I'm going to do next. Um, so for example, icon background color. You can do that, done, and you'll be able to see what that looks like. Great. I might just reflect that on the other icons before I show you how to make it look a bit more modern.
cool. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to leave these three as it is. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this entire row so you can see the difference and you can actually choose how you want your section to appear. So now I'll just go in and edit this top row here and make it a little bit more modern. Going back into the edit mode, what I want to do is actually remove the dark circle and have the logo stand out by itself. It will have a much cleaner look to it and you'll see what I mean. The way to do that is remove the icon background color. The color for this particular background, for it to blend into the background we've got here, it's not a clean white, it's an off-white and the exact color, and I just know this from experience, I believe is FC, FC, FC. Let me just double check. Yep, it's FC, FC, FC. It's not a pure white. If you make that a pure white, you'll still be able to see the circle, the white circle with the slightly less white background. So this color combo here will actually blend in perfectly with the background. And click done. Now if I save that, that's what it looks like because the logo is actually camouflaged. So what I need to do actually is go in and also change the icon color. So we just changed the icon background color, now I'm changing the icon color and I'll make the, the icon color that blue. So that's the blue. Done. Let's have a look at that. That looks absolutely fantastic. So now I'll go in and replicate that with these icons here. Okay, so there we are. I think that looks a lot more modern than this here, but that's obviously just my opinion. You can do what you feel is best for your website and your business, but I'll leave all of this up here just so it's clear. So if you have any comments on that part of making your WordPress website, let me know. Hopefully it hasn't been too difficult so far to build. Next, what we want to try and do is create a call to action and button for our WordPress website. This could be something like sign up now to our newsletter with the link to the newsletter or contact us to make an appointment with a contact button. So let's create this call to action and button. Back into your custom homepage, you'll need to add a new row. This one will be two columns because we want one column for the text here one column for the button. So two rows, one slightly wider than the other, so let's give that a try and click insert. Okay, we need to add a new widget. Um, for the text, let's use a widget called the Site Origin Editor. That is much better than this text widget here. And I'll show you why. So let's add that in. When you use the site origin editor, it's much like Microsoft Word. You can put in some text, you can bold, italic, bullet point, all of that stuff, and it's pretty user friendly. You can also change the text color or indent, etc., etc., just like you would in a Word application. That is only if you're in the visual tab, by the way. If you're in the text tab, you won't see any of those options because the text tab, think of that as the HTML or code tab. In this tab, you only use this if you want to develop using code. 
We will actually explore that later on, for example, when we're embedding a Google map. Another example is embedding a YouTube video. You only input the embed code in the text field. Now this visual field or tab here is the main reason why this module is much better than the text module. So if I use this, you don't get many options and it's just hard to manage your text or content. So always go with the site origin editor when in doubt. You can also add media such as images um, and that can upload straight into your uh, content right here. But anyway, what we're trying to do here is add a call to action. So let's say, let's add some text in here. And click done. Now we'll also go up and add a new widget and we want to add a button. Let's add the site origin button. Drag that in and edit. Button text. Uh, destination URL. You can obviously edit this once you have all your pages set up. Okay, icon. You can choose whether you want to add an icon next to the text. It's not essential. I think this might be nice. Um, okay, icon placement. Design and layout. What I'm going to do is just click done and save so we can at least see the progress we've made and then we can make any adjustments as we need to. Okay, so we need to make a few adjustments. Firstly, this entire section is the same color as the one above it, so it's it just blends. So we'll change that. We'll make this text a bit bigger. We'll change the look and feel of this button and the color. So let's start with adding or, or separating this section from the others. Hover over Edit Row and you'll be able to go to the layout section. You can add some padding which separates or which is the space between it and the section above it. And row layout, let's select the full width layout. Once you change the color, the background color of this row under design, you'll be able to see that color take the full width. So design, background color, let me just give you a quick example by using a very slight off-white. There we go. So that now separates this section from the one above it. Now this background color can be anything. So for the purposes of this example, let's try a green background and I'll use that color combo here. You can obviously experiment. Okay, now we need to make the text a little bigger. Let's go for the heading two option. Now this is black text on our what is going to be a green background so I can actually change the color of this text and say let's make it a white text. I won't see it there but I'll see it when I save the page. Um, let's just save for now and see what that looks like so it's clear step by step. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so now let's edit this button. Align, okay, button theme. We have a selection of a flat button or a wire button. I, I recommend choosing between one of those. A flat button is just a flat color and the wire, I believe, should have a line around the button, giving it a nice modernistic look. Yep, perfect. And we can adjust that color as well. A 
button color. Let's make that white so it contrasts against the green. And text color also white. Leave that as default. Font size medium. Let's make it a medium font size. Let's see what that looks like now. That looks very, very cool. We're going to have to adjust the hover state for this because that obviously blends in. So we'll do that a little bit later. But as you can see, that's starting to look very nice and modern. We can also adjust the padding so that this button appears right in the center of where this text appears. So it looks like it's all in line. Padding top. Let's try that. That's too much. And that's pretty much in line. Very, very nice. If you have any issues setting up a call to action or button, let me know and I'll try and help you. I'm also going to try and adjust the hover state because right now that isn't the best thing in the world. Use hover effects. I'm going to turn that off because that will require some custom coding. Next, I'll show you how to add a contact form to your homepage, something that sits on your page around here. To add a contact form, we're going to have to use a new plugin. So go to plugins and click add new. Search for a plugin called Ninja Forms. This is the one here, Ninja Forms by WP Ninjas. Install now and activate. Perfect. Okay, what we need to do is click on the Add New button. If that doesn't appear, go to your sidebar over here, go to Ninja Forms and Add New. You can do a couple of things here. You can start with a blank form, which will allow you to basically add any number of fields you want on your actual contact form. Um, anything from, I'll show you an example. So you can use a single line text for names, first name, last name. You can use or have a calendar added to your form. So you just do that by clicking here. So that could be your first name. For example, click on that, label it as first name. Is it required or essential? Yes. Done. And then click the plus icon to add more fields. Say we want to capture somebody's email address. So, yep, email. Uh, we want to capture. Actually, you can also use first name here. It'll already be configured. Uh, we want to capture somebody's phone number. We may even want someone to input a date if they're setting an appointment. And then last but not least, a submit button so they can submit the form. Now when you select your fields, you need to go into each one of these things here and then edit the label if you want to and, se and select whether it's a required field. The easier way to do that, so I'll just close this for a second. 
The easier way to do a contact form is to use the contact us pre-prepared form. So let's try that. Okay, perfect. Name. I'll just change that label to first name. Yep, I want someone's email. That's a required field as well. How can we help you? And send message. So say you've configured the fields that you want to appear in your form. The next thing you do is go to the emails and actions section. You can actually edit quite a few things here, leaving it as default. So the main things you'll want to edit here is a success message. What's displayed after you submit or after a user submits your form? Okay. So in this example, they will see this message after they submit their form and this thing here will actually display their email address. Okay, done. Email confirmation. Okay. And notification. This is the email that you actually receive into your email inbox. And where it says here too, system email, that is actually the email that you have set up your WordPress installation with. Just to be super clear, if you go to settings and general, this email address here is your system email. So in this case, the form will be delivered to that email address and you will be able to reply to the email address of the person submitting the form. When you receive the email, you will receive it with a subject titled new message from, or we can say inquiry, but don't mess with the rest in the uh, brackets. Um, and I would recommend you leave all of this the same. Let's click done. Advanced display settings. I would recommend you get rid of the form title, contact me, because it often gets in the way. And you just switch that off by clicking that button there. We can add a title to the form separately, but it doesn't have to be this thing over here because it doesn't look right. I just know that by experience. Um, click done. And that's pretty much all you need to set up the form. When you've done that, click on the publish button. Perfect. Close that window, click on the X. So this is the one I just created, number two. We've created the form. Now what we need to do is place the form on our website. What you need to do is copy this short code here, everything including the brackets. So copy that, highlight all of that, right click, copy. Then I want you to go to appearance and your home page. We want to add a module in this section here or this location here. So let's add a new row. We want two rows because we want the form to one uh, in one row. Later on, we'll put a Google map in the other row. Um, let's say the form we want it to be narrower and insert that's down here. Now we need to add the widget. We need to add the site origin editor widget because that will allow us to input that short code. So that widget's set up, that widget's been brought into this location here. Click on edit. A couple of minutes ago, I copied the short code for Ninja Forms. Now I'm just pasting that short code in here. It doesn't matter if you do that in the text tab or in the visual tab. Perfect. And click done save home page. When that's saved, just refresh your website to see what that looks like. Perfect. So we've got a fully functional form over here. Now, when a user comes to your website, sends a message, they will see that success message that we actually 
uh, customized a second ago. Now let me just show you what I receive on my end and you will receive on your end. There we go. There's the email that I received. So I received the person, uh, first of all, the, the title of the form I changed to inquiry. So there it is. The message that was sent and this is the person's name and email address. If I hit reply, you can see that the reply address is their email address and therefore you can get in touch with your customers instantly via email. So that's a very, very effective piece of functionality to have on your website. When the uh, user refreshes this page, they'll of course see the form again. They won't see this message like that. So that's how you add a form or create a form on your WordPress website. If you have any questions about that, please do ask in the comments below this video and I'll try and help you out. Let's add a section where people can find our contact details, for example, phone number or address, and also add a dynamic Google map to our WordPress website. That's the type of map that people will be able to zoom in and out on and be able to pinpoint your location of business very easily. So we want to put that next to the form, for example. So let's go back into the page builder. Let's add a new widget. We want to use the site origin editor again. So I'll drag that in there. So embedding a Google map, first go to Google Maps. You'll need to put your exact business address in here. For this example, let me just use this. Obviously, you would be placing your own business address in here. When you do that, you'll see that Google Map pinpoints your address. Then you can do two things. You can either click on this button here, the share button, or clicking on this menu, you can click on share or embed map. So if I click on the share button, you'll see a screen pops up with the option to embed a map. It's got some default sizes here, but we don't want to use the default sizes because we want our map to fit into this area over here. Take up all of that space. So what we'll choose is a custom size and it'll be a little bit of trial and error until we get the right custom size. We can preview the size before we embed the map. So that's what this 800 by 600 looks like. 800 is the width and 600 is the height of your map. So just to have a guesstimate, let's leave it as 800 and height of 300. This looks about right. It might fit. So what I'm going to do is copy this HTML, right click and copy that code. Back into your page builder, you'll need to go to the edit tab and this part is very important. You need to embed that code that you've copied in here into this edit, uh, into this text tab, sorry, because you may remember the text tab is what holds HTML. So paste that in there. If you do that correctly, you'll be able to see a preview like that. But if you don't do that correctly and accidentally do that in the visual tab, nothing will happen because if you save that, it will just come up as text on your home page. Like that. So we want to add that code. I'll remove all that into the text tab. Perfect. That's the preview. Let's click done, save home page and see how that looks on the front end of our website. Pretty good, pretty good. So it could be a little bit taller to take up more space. And I can actually just simply go back in here. Let's experiment with 400. So that'll be a touch taller. Uh, copy that code again, and I'll just replace all of that code with the new code. The bits that have changed are these bits here, 800 and 300 for the height. So I can even simply just change that to 400 if I wanted to and click done and refresh. There we go. What I can also do is put some text above the map. All I need to do is go into the um, 
into the editor section. Press enter a couple of times and I'll be able to type some text. Okay, so phone address and let's click done and save the page there you go that's absolutely perfect people can easily find you they can call you they can uh, find your location and they can more importantly zoom in and out of this map to pinpoint your exact location I think this looks fantastic if you have any questions about adding a map to your website, let me know. Another thing I can do is put a title above this section to make it look a little bit cleaner. I might add another row actually. Uh, just a single layout and drag that one above the map and form. Um, what I'll do is add the widget called Vantage headline. Okay. Let's check that out. Very, very good. I'm quite happy with that, actually. I would now like to demonstrate to you how you can add some free text and perhaps an image and embed a YouTube video to your website just as a demonstration so you know how flexible this site builder is. So if you go back to appearance and homepage, let's add a new row let's say I want three columns I'm going to add text in one column an image in this column and embed a YouTube video in this column add a widget and the widget I'm going to use is the site origin editor and I'm going to use that widget for all three in different ways so the first one some free text In this column here, I'm going to add an image using the same module, the Site Origin Editor. To add an image to any section of your website, all you need to do is click on the Add Media button. And you can select an image from your media library or you can upload a new file from your computer. So let's take this one for example and then click Insert to Post. You can also update the title of the image if you so wish. and I'll just leave mine blank. You can also adjust the size of the image and also I'll show you in a second you can click on the insert link button over here to hyperlink this image to anywhere you want it to link to and last but not least I'm going to add a YouTube video To embed a YouTube video, all you need to do is go to a video that you want to embed. Auto Let's upgrades. take this one for example. I'll click on the share button, then I'll click on embed. And I can actually choose some embedding options, whether to show the player controls and also to show suggested videos when finished, etc, etc. That's just standard YouTube functionality. When you're ready, just copy the code YouTube gives you. Got the wrong module in there, so let me just duplicate this one. And now remember, when you're embedding a video, you've got to paste the code in the text tab. 
then you'll see a preview of that code in the visual tab. If you do that the other way around, you won't actually get an embedded video because the text tab is where you need to put HTML. So there we go. Let's save that and check that it's all appearing as we need it on our home page. Perfect. So there are some simple examples of how to embed different types of content to your website. Hopefully that makes it easy for you to use. Let me now show you how to add a services page to your WordPress website. Go to pages and click add new. Now a services page can be used to display what your business offers in terms of products or services and it's a good way to lay them out for the user to see. Think of it as a landing page. The user will land on that page to get a sense of what you offer and then perhaps click off to those individual areas for more information. So let's label our services page and click publish. Before you start building the page there are a couple of config items that you'll need to update. So we want to get rid of this big sidebar and we want a nice big heading here but we don't want this default heading over here. So to get rid of the sidebar, select the full width page and with no title to get rid of the title. So if you update that you should see a blank page. Perfect. Now we can start building it out. First things first, go to the page builder tab and add a new row. We want to add a title, so we only need one column. Insert, add a widget. Let's add the site origin vantage headline and edit that. Put in a headline and a subheading if you want as well. Now let's add another row and add some modules for each one of our services. Um, I'll show you two different ways you can do this. Firstly, I'll show you a way you can do this with three columns. Clicking insert, add a widget, and we'll use the circle icon widget. Okay, so let's start with one. The title for our first service, perhaps it's physiotherapy. Let's put in some dummy text. And choose an icon. Icon position. Let's leave it at the top and let's have a large icon. We can also have a link for more information. So perhaps we will also build another page down the track that is specifically for physiotherapy and details everything about that topic. So if we do do that, we can actually put a URL. I'm just guessing and making up a URL right now, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Good. Now, let's just remove the color from the circle in the same way we did previously. Scroll down to icon color. We'll have to give the actual icon a color and I've got those details here with me. Um, I want to use that shade there, which is a similar one I used on the home page. You can obviously feel free to pick any color you want, but it's a good idea to keep it consistent by using the color code, otherwise known as the hex code for your website. Okay, icon background color. I know from experience, it's that there. That is the same color as the background over here. Let's save that and see what that looks like. 
Absolutely perfect. I think that looks really clean and nice. Let me now duplicate this module two more times and then we can go in and edit the details. So I'll duplicate and then I'll drag and drop into these areas here. Then edit. Let's say remedial massage and consultation. So this one can be remedial. Obviously you would normally update the links associated with each. And also the icon. Very nice, I think that looks very, very cool. So somebody can come here, click on uh, your services page and come to, come to this page here to then perhaps, if you wanted to, create another page on top of this for each one where they can click through to and read additional details. Now you can also put this page in the menu here by simply going to Appearance and Menus and adding the page to the menu. You know how to do that because that's been demonstrated earlier in this video. I'm just going to show you another styling feature. What I want to do is put a light box around these items. Um, let me just duplicate this entire row. Just so you can see the difference. To do that, what we want to do is... On the particular module, click Edit and then click Design. We want to add a background color. Now let's say we want it to be a very, very light gray. Click Done. Let's check that out. Here we go, here's our duplicated row. We can see the circle now because the, circles are, the background color of the circle is a little bit different. We'll just need to update that as well. icon background color and it was F4, F4, there it is. So now that should match up perfectly. So there we go, there's another little styling feature. So if you like that design instead, you can use that for all three boxes. And let me just demonstrate that. Absolutely perfect. I think that looks pretty cool. Now if you wanted to add another page to detail each one, all you need to do is go in and click on Add New and simply add a new page, for example, Physiotherapy. The parent page would be Services, so it would have the right URL structure. Like that. And you would obviously take this link, insert it in the, uh, the module here to update that link there. And after you set up the page, this page here, using the various tactics that I've shown you in the last half an hour throughout setting up the home page, you can set up this page in the very same way using the page builder. And there we go, you can link off to each individual service. I hope that made sense, but if you have any questions, please do feel free to contact me or ask in the comments below. 
Let's go ahead and create an image gallery for our WordPress website. So let's add a new page. Let's call it uh, Photos. Um, set the default to full width with no title. Then all we need to do is go to Add Media and click on Create Gallery and select photos from your media library or you'll have to upload them from your computer. Now before you start the upload, I highly, highly recommend that you manipulate or make smaller the image sizes. For example, let me just open this one here. This image is massive as you can see and it's currently taking up 2 megabytes. So if you've got about 10 to 12 images that take up that amount of space, it's going to take you about um, 5 to 10 minutes to upload, possibly depending on how fast your internet connection is. More importantly, it's going to take the user who's browsing your website ages to load the page. So what you need to do is resize images and you can use a number of tools, even online, to resize images. So this one here, I'm going to make about 30% of the original size. It will go down from about 2 megabytes to, when I save it, about 400 kilobytes. So it's about 20% of this file size. So that just means it will be 80% quicker for your visitors who are browsing your image gallery. And that's very, very important. Otherwise, they'll be sitting there for ages waiting for your page to load. So I've gone ahead and resized all of my images. So... After you go to Create Gallery, upload your images, select them from your computer. I'm just going to do that and click Open. And what will happen now is all the images will be uploaded into your media library. And you can use or reuse them anytime you wish once they are there. So I'll just fast forward this video a couple of minutes so that all of the uploading is done. Perfect, so all of that is uploaded. When all of yours are uploaded, you need to go down here and click on Create a New Gallery. Link to Media File, click that, and choose the number of columns. I think 4 or 5 is quite a nice number, and I'll stick with 4. Um, and then click on Insert Gallery. If you go to the Visual tab, you'll see the images laid out like this. And if you want to edit any of those settings, just hover and click on the pencil icon to edit any one of those settings. So you can experiment as you wish. Okay, so I'm going to try five columns, update gallery, and let's update the page. Let's check that out. Cool, that looks all right. Now what happens when a person clicks on an image? Your visitor is kicked off the main page and then they land on this page here where they can't really navigate or do anything except hitting the back button, which is not ideal. So now I'm going to show you how to create a photo album with all of these images so that people can scroll through all of your photos in a really nice, clean, easy way. To do that, Go to Plugins and add a new plugin. You need to add a plugin called Lightbox. Simple Lightbox. Search for that. It's this one here. So install that one. And activate it. Let's check out its settings. Fortunately, you don't have to do too much configuration with this one. You simply just um, activate the plugin and then refresh your site or your photo gallery page. And now let's see what happens when you click on the image. Absolutely sensational. So you can see now images are popping up into a photo album and I can scroll through to see all of the images without getting bumped off the page and I can just click out of there to come back to the page so I think that's really really cool I think it's a really cool feature to have 
it's a great way to demonstrate all of your products or the outcomes of your services or just happy faces as a result of testimonials that you may have. Hopefully that's clear. If you have any questions about adding this to your website, let me know. Something I forgot to show you, if you want to make changes to this photo gallery, what you need to do is come to this area here, click on the edit button. You can actually caption each image and that will have a caption when the person opens it up on their page. You can also rearrange images by dragging and dropping like this. And if you want to add more images to your gallery like I want to, click on add to gallery and then select images from your computer or from your media library. So let's say I want to add these and then rearrange. So there's a couple other tips for you for managing your photo galleries. And don't forget, you can have as many as you want on your website. Another cool thing you can do is if you click on the page builder tab, you can add a heading above the gallery. So let's insert a column, let's move it to the top. Let's add the Vantage headline. And there we go, a final product. I think that's very cool and it looks very slick and modern. Here is how to add some social media to your website. Say for example, I want to add some social media icons somewhere on our site, say for example on our homepage above the form in this area. The way to do that is to go into whichever page you want to add social media to, add a new row if you haven't already, or you can add a widget. And the widget you'll need is this one down here, the Vantage Social Media. Drag that to wherever you want that to appear, so in this case above the form, and click edit. I generally don't tend to give it a title. You can select the icon size. And what you need to do is then input your social media assets, the URLs of those assets in these boxes, and for whatever assets you input your URL for, it will appear on the website. So let's give this a try. Let's say I have a Facebook one, let's say I have a Twitter. Let's say for whatever reason I have an Instagram, which I don't, um, but I do have a YouTube. And you can also add a link to an email. Let's save that and see what that looks like. There we go, very, very nice. So obviously the person that comes in here can link off to your social media. And it's a good way to encourage social sharing. Well done everyone if you've made it this far in the video because you've just created a three and a half thousand dollar website in two hours for next to nothing. And this is the result. It looks absolutely fantastic on desktop as well as mobile. Any questions you have, I urge you to get in touch with me through the comments so that I can help you out Otherwise, please do give this a thumbs up and share this with as many people as you can so that we can get the word out there and get people making these types of professional websites with WordPress for next to no money at all.